Thank you for present, Professor. I think you uh, uh, preempted what I was going to say, but that's just that was very good. I uh, will try to just highlight uh, what basically we have done. Not necessarily presenting the physical deployment sites we've done, but what are the uh, the things we took into account to make sure that we are deploying right. Uh, I wouldn't want to go into uh, in further detail of what, what, what the TV white space would, uh, you know, would have, uh, the concept which professors give into us now, uh, but I, I will still highlight some of the uh, uh, use cases in, in case uh, any of the members here would like to do the same and what we can take into account to make sure that we can have a successful deployment. Um, we are still deploying and uh, we will see challenges, we will see situations where the spectrum of music is not as what we want and uh, it's important that we analyze the spectrum every time we are, we are trying to build uh, a, a site. Um, we, we, are, we are attached to different tools, uh, we, we do different uh, we use different techniques to identify how best to measure we deploy. Fortunately, in our case, we have worked with uh, at least two or three vendors. Uh, we are still reviewing uh, a, a, a vendor we can mass work, mass work with, and uh, that's something which we have to uh, uh, work, uh, decide in the, in the coming months. I will touch on a number of aspects here. I will probably go into the uh, a bit of overview of the uh, the, the uh, what what are other operators in Malawi using. It's very important for us to catch on what is everybody else we competing with using and what sort of technologies they have. And from there, I will touch a bit more on the typical white space itself. I'll then look at various topologies and configurations which are useful for us to, to be able to achieve optimum coverage and, 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 and user acquisition, uh, client and client connectivity and acquisition. It's very important because TV white space is fairly new. They, there is still a lot of development in the process. The capacity for it uh, is still really below than what we expect. So we have to you know mix and match to make sure we get it right uh, and have all the capacities. And finally I will uh, give a view of our planning for uh, coverage uh, and, and we use standard tools like say radio mobile I don't know whether the members here have used it before. This will give you a, a rough view of our network. Uh, I have to confess, not all of it is deployed. This is our planned deployment. So we are deploying, I mentioned in the first place, we are deploying in phases. But this gives you a coverage footprint of the network in Malawi. What you see, the links are actually the our back or links. We use uh, a different technology. We use a 5 gigahertz technology from the camp and from Mimosa. And at every point we've connected on the eight day locations, there is a TV white space. Uh, 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 and, and, and it segments it in, uh, as we go along, so we roll it out uh, following this, this plan. It won't be very religious, but we'll try as much as we can to make sure we meet the timelines. Important to notice that our entire backbone is because we manage ourselves, we run ourselves, is at least more than a gig. And also it's very important to understand the maximum capacity we can achieve on a base station. And we need to, to, to get more, so we have to do more, as I say, I will show you on the configuration we've done to make sure we can, we can achieve more capacity. This problem is a uh, our analysis, so you take it from us, this is what our competitors are using, this is both the telecom companies 
and other ISPs. Malawi has got more number of ISPs than the listed there, but it gives you an idea of what uh, existing operators are using as technologies. Uh, Airtel and TNM and MTL, those are licensed telecommunications company. And you can see that from an access perspective, they're using 2G or 3G or uh, LTE, uh, but also uh, uh, others are using CDMA and WiMAX to provide access. Uh, we don't play most of them are use microwave and fiber. Uh, we as a company, we don't, uh, we only use fiber as our uplink from our, uh, our uplink provider uh, going out to the, to the planet Earth. Uh, some companies have chosen not to, uh, to, to deploy the, the, the networks countrywide, uh, as I said, because they choose to go in particular towns and, and major cities where they would like to operate. And I think one of the videos I showed in the first time, uh, uh, Brian Longo, who's uh, our, our absolute provider, confirmed that, that most of the providers are actually working within specific towns. But it's important to note that um, at C3 we have our backhaul, which is a microwave. Our distribution is on uh, uh, TV wide spaces. And uh, our access, obviously, is on Wi Fi. So our users just connect using Wi Fi. So, as I, I highlighted, our distribution network, C3, we've chosen to use uh, TV wide space. It's not the only wireless technology we can um, It gives us advantage in many areas because we, we are taking advantage of the propagation characteristics, uh, which uh, I think the professor has highlighted here. It's important to note that the terrain we are operating in requires us to penetrate uh, uh, trees and hills and, and, and some, some very uh, uh, open to reach communities behind uh, 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 the, 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 some buildings. So we need to be very careful when you're deploying this and there's the whole reason we chose to go for uh, TV white spaces. A greater importance is to make sure that we do not interfere with licensed broadcasters. Malawi One has uh, migrated from uh, analog broadcasting to broadcasting. There are still remnants of broadcasters which are having a switched off the transmitters. And as a result, we need to make sure that we don't interfere with those, or they don't interfere with us. And in some cases, these uh, analog transmitters tend to transmit very high power that they could technically damage our equipment if at all we do want to, uh, to uh, use uh, uh, those locations. So that's a drawback. And we have to work very close with the regulator. We have to work very close with the uh, other providers to ensure that every location we want to go and deploy our systems, uh, we are able to uh, uh, deploy without getting a lot of interference. And again, from the regulatory perspective and from ITU, uh, it is a, a condition that primary users of the spectrum we are trying to use are protected and they don't get interfered with. And that's why we are trying to follow a standard, uh, uh, standards to find hardware so that it complies uh, with such uh, uh, protection. I think uh, uh, it was mentioned here, you can see that this is sort of like just a visual view of showing that you can have a, a base station and a receiver uh, on a non line of sight uh, view that allows the signal to you know, go over or at least uh, uh, either sometimes in a train. The, the, the obstruction in front of it and be able to reach out to the receiver. And as I say, uh, 
the nanofibre capabilities of this technology or low frequency uh, 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 use systems allows us to go past obstacles which we will see we can be able to uh, reach end user devices or uh, uh, client customer purchase equipment uh, uh, without any, any difficulties. The distance limitations vary. Uh, you heard here that the, the testing we done in Malawi um, I was privileged enough to be part of the uh, regulatory team. We achieved much longer distances as far as 20 uh, kilometers, which was really good. But again, also it's important to understand the, uh, the multiplexing techniques used uh, to, to, to do this. And the modulation. These are things which we take into account, which will allow us to deliver uh, the, the capacities we, we need. Malawi uses 8 megahertz channel, and, and I'll show you how many channels Malawi do have based on, on, on the spectrum resource we have as a country. This will probably give you a, a view of the differences between the coverage footprint of our Wi-Fi and our, our typical white space um, in terms of how far you can go. Uh, in Malawi, we have at least 28 channels um, on the bands from 470 to 694. And I would say in Malawi, we use 8 megahertz. Uh, uh, most of the countries which are in the same region as Malawi pretty much is uh, 8 megahertz, other countries is 6 megahertz. Uh, and uh, we can, uh, on a single 8 megahertz channel, we are able to transmit 30 megabits per second. We are deploying either in the double uh, sector, or in some cases, uh, 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 actually three sector topologies, and I'll show you how we are achieving that on the uh, uh, deployment. This one example shows a, a point to money point configuration. And it's a three sector setup. So on a tower, we have three base stations configured on three sector uh, uh, topology. We are achieving anywhere between 20 to 35 megabits per second on the equipment we use. And on the client side, we have the normal uh, uh, client containers and then distribute that wirelessly to the wireless devices. That's another topology we, we have done in highly densely uh, populated areas where we want to achieve maximum uh, 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 coverage where the demand for capacity or the demand of, of, of high speed, uh, high capacity is, is required. We do deploy um, a dual sector point to point point configuration. This gives us an ability to uh, achieve more than the 30 megabits or the 20 megabits we are able to achieve in some cases 60 or, uh, or 70 megabits a second per sector. We can do this either by having uh, 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 two panel, panel antennas to two radios or a single part of the antenna, 120 degrees, with a dual port, but two radios to be able to have maximum coverage. <coughs> For a normal user use case, you then it's the standard way of doing it. Once you deliver, think of a TV wire as just a pipe. Once you deliver that to our uh, wireless aid uh, access point, which is over 9.4, 
and uh, the wireless networks could just work as normal. So this is the typical usage scenario we have. Most of our clients, when we do connect them, the TV was the CPE, behind that they have their normal rotor or wireless AP, and then they just work as normal. So again, we're looking at the TV white space just as a pipe to achieve delivery of the capacity they need on their side. And there are several access points you can get. Uh, our colleagues there show this micro seat and all sorts of stuff we have around which you could use. The Wi Fi would give us a coverage footprint. It's, others will say 500 meters, or others will give us 200 meters. Um, it all depends uh, uh, how we are, how we deploy the the uh, access points on this thing. That's giving us an understanding of the layer two deployment. It's important to understand because when you work on the TV white space, we're really talking about layer two. Um, it, we, we do everything to just make sure we have seen the link. And once the link is there, the rest of it, we, we, we go beyond it by using standard uh, 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 techniques. So you can see that in, in this case, the TV white space is nuclear distribution. And from there, we are now connecting to uh, an access point, which then, again, give us access to the network. There are a number of things we have to do to make sure that the TV white space path or the capacity is well provisioned based on how many users or how many access points are connected to the particular uh, CPU. Critical use process, I think it was highlighted is planning. The, the channel planning is very important because we have to be able to plan the channels we want to use. Uh, these are allocated to us by the regulator. Um, there is a fee and we have to understand how many channels we need to use uh, and how we can then deploy the network without causing addressing channels to, uh, uh, to, to interfere. In this scenario, we've done a, a view of how adjusted channel uh, uh, planning can be made. One channel is used on this, on this narrow gift to you per sector, but as you deploy them, you can actually see that a three sector would need probably about nine to twelve channels if we deploy on 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 a, on a, on a wide space. So we, we use a technique of channel reuse. So we are able to reuse the same channels uh, as we move from one tower or one site to the next one. Uh, when we plan. 
In your case, it might not be that, that the case, but at least we get closer to knowing that if we do deploy, this is the kind of coverage we get. Um, other operators might have better tools. Uh, uh, we, we are not yet there to have some of the planning tools, so we use open source tools to be able to make the planning we require. I think that's all I had to share with you for now. Thank you.